So one week on from Imola and F1 was back at it for its first double header. As we got ourselves ready for the thrilling, fast paced, action packed, can't miss event of the Monaco Grand Prix. Boring. Not gonna lie, I am quite looking forward to my annual Sunday afternoon nap. Coming in, our eyes were on Lando Norris leading the challenging pack behind Verstappen, as after finishing P2, P1 and P2 again in the last three races, the question was if Lando could win another. I would say could Charles Leclerc take it to Verstappen, but well we all know how that usually goes. No, no, the gun box goes. But would this year be any different? Well, let's find out as we get into my ultimate review of Formula 1 and the 2024 Monaco Grand Prix. Coming into the weekend and we'd had some driver transfer rumours, as the latest featured Williams in their quest to replace Logan Sargent, with two possible candidates, the first being Valtteri Bottas and the second being Carlos Sainz. With Carlos you have a driver in their prime, having arguably the best season of their career, only available because of the craziest driver transfer in F1 history, and then you have Valtteri who, well I don't really know what he does nowadays, gets beaten by his teammate in the slowest car on the grid? Over at the sharp end and Sky Sports had released some fun footage of Max and Lando playing some paddleball together before the weekend. Glad to see that two friends can compete at the top of the sport and still have good fun while doing so. Someone should probably tell Lewis and Nico that. And then finally over at McLaren and we had a special livery, with the car turning yellow and green as a tribute to Ayrton Senna who holds the record of six race wins and five in a row between 1989 and 1983. Into practice then and Lewis Hamilton didn't seem too bothered to drive around the chicane, just like Mercedes don't seem too bothered about bringing a quick car to a race. However, he wasn't the only one, as Carlos Sainz found himself locking up out of the tunnel and so elected to miss the turn as well. But the place proving most difficult was actually Turn 1, with Alex Albon demonstrating exactly how not to do it, then followed up by Nico Hülkenberg in the Haas, as well as Charles Leclerc and also Lewis Hamilton. Oh, and Oscar Piastri. Anyone else? Well, Valtteri Bottas, as it turned out, going off at Sandovot, apparently trying to see if he could find a seat for next year down there. Must not have been successful, as then he went looking later on in the barriers. Losing it a little out of the swimming pool and ending up hitting the armco, which also then became the end of his session. Clearly learning from teammate Joe, who was clipping the barrier at turn one, leaving debris all over the track, which then got run over by Charles Leclerc on his run up the hill. Trust me, Charles, you don't want to be stealing parts from the Sauber. Over in the Kevin Magnussen camp and he was feeling like he needed a new seat. I'll be honest with you Kevin, the way you've been driving this year, you might need to find a new one permanently. Over at Alpine and it was power unit issues sidelining Gasly for a good chunk of time, with the team fixing the issue and sending him back out, just to have the car break and him end up back in the pits. Because as we all know, if there's one word that sums up Alpine, it's reliability. Then over in the world of Max Verstappen and things weren't all plain sailing as he found himself tapping the wall a couple of times but managing to get away with it. And then, just to make things worse, Yuki was getting in Max's way, with the RB car causing problems in the swimming pool section and, well, Max being less than pleased. To be fair, I just think Yuki is doing everything he can to actually be noticed by the Red Bull team when it comes to their second seat. And then finally, keeping with the RB theme, Williams team principal James Vowles had quite possibly the best line of the weekend. Most, apart from, if I remember correctly, the two... Don't ask me what they're called, AlphaTauri, Visa, Cash App, uh, buy one, get one free, but they, they were the Into qualifying, which as we know is the most important one of the year. Just nobody told Sergio Perez that. As in what I can only describe as the most Sergio Perez thing to do ever, he was knocked out in 18th. Well that was fucking dreadful. But why you ask? Did he crash? Get caught in traffic? No, he was just awful. But as it turned out, Sergio had himself an unexpected friend. As Fernando Alonso decided that he'd forgotten how to drive, either that or he's just spent too long around Lance Stroll, as he was also out in Q1 in P16. However, in last place was Zhou Guan Yu, until the Haas cars got involved, as they were both disqualified after the session and would have to start from the back. Pretty sure I know someone who can give you some tips. Into Q2 and things were pretty straightforward, with Ocon, Ricardo, Stroll and the Haas cars eliminated on track. So. Q3, and after the first runs, the times were led by Charles Leclerc, with Piastri and then Verstappen in behind. First challenger, Lewis Hamilton, into P4. Next up, George Russell, P3. 
with Carlos Sainz then taking that third position and Lando Norris slotting into P4, with Max Verstappen on his final lap, hitting the wall and not improving from P6. But at the top, with Leclerc and Piastri staying as they were, it was a Ferrari McLaren front row. On to the race start then, and it was drama free for about 10 seconds, as Monaco's first victim was Carlos Sainz, as at the opening turn he had the tiniest bit of contact with Piastri which gave him a puncture, and then three corners later, his Ferrari decided turning was overrated and so he was into the runoff at Casino. Meanwhile over at Alpine we had a candidate for the dumbest attempted overtake of the season, as Esteban Ocon dived up the inside of his teammate Gasly at Portier on the opening lap, which is already a pretty stupid move, especially when you end up knocking yourself out of the race by making contact between the pair of you and you were both sitting in the points. But it was at this point where from race control we had a red flag, but it wasn't for the Alpines, or Carlos Sainz either. Instead it was for Sergio Perez who alongside the Haas cars had repainted the track with carbon fibre, as going up the hill Checo got tagged by Magnussen before slamming into the barrier and then the Haas of Nico Hülkenberg, with debris spewed absolutely everywhere and quite frankly one of the bigger crashes I've seen at Monaco, with the Red Bull quite literally transformed into just the survival cell and both Haas cars out of the race as well. Although silver linings for Haas, Kevin Magnussen can't pick up any more penalty points if he's not actually in the race. But once the debris was cleared and the barriers fixed it was time for start number 2, with Carlos Sainz and Ferrari owing race control a few beers as the Spaniard had been placed back into third for the restart which this time went smoothly as everyone remembered how to drive their cars without crashing. And because of the red flag, compared to lap 1, every car still in the race had changed their tyres, meaning in theory nobody needed to stop again and they could all run to the end, which is pretty much exactly what happened, along with Lance Stroll having to stop due to a self-inflicted puncture, which while ruining his race did allow for some fresh soft tyres and some actual overtakes. First up, Zhou Guan Yu with Stroll getting by through the tunnel, and then a nice little switch back at turn 1 to get by the Williams of Logan Sargent, with Lance clearly following in the footsteps of Valtteri Bottas who'd made an overtake on the American just a couple of laps earlier. But to be honest that was about it, as up at the front there were no overtakes in sight. As Charles Leclerc would finish in first place to take the win at home, P1 in the Monaco Grand Prix. But anyways that's all for now, I hope you have enjoyed even though there's not really too much else to say for this one, if you have give the video a thumbs up, get yourself subscribed and until next time, take care.